Class meeting is being recorded. There it is. Wow, these voices. There, you know, Randy Orton has voices in his head. We have voices in our computers, apparently. But welcome to Up with the White and Gold. I am Jeremy the Impact York. He is GA Tech John Watts. We are here to talk all things Georgia Tech. Got it right that time. And uh, of course, Bobby Dot Field and mm. everything. And as always, let's start by saying, How are you, bud? Well, I thank you for calling me Bobby Dodd Field, even though that's not the name anymore. Uh, it will always be Bobby Dodd to me. Bobby Dodd Stadium, whatever it is, Hyundai Field or whatever it is now. But it's always, it's our always Bobby Dodd, Dodd for me. Grant Field at Bobby Dodd Stadium is what I will always know it is. There we go. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah, it's uh, it was about you no, know, it was a bye week for for us, um, bye week for high school as well. Um, at least for Carrollton City, it was. We had you know, other schools around here having to play games on different days. When Central Carrollton played Monday night. Uh, there, yeah, Monday, <laughs> and then they turn around and played. Uh, they played Friday. Yeah, and it's weird. Like as soon as they get that done, then GHSA decides, "Oh, we're going to extend the regular season and allow people to make them up later." So they could have just done it later and not have to worry about a Monday night. Because I tell you what, the uh, Carrollton, the, all the bands in the county had an exhibition two last night. Yep. So, um, and I saw this morning that uh, Gradic was. Uh, on their Facebook, did the whole con- whole thing live. So that's nice of them to uh, show the band. Yeah, I know. Uh, w was a WGTV, who's also in kind of Bowden area. They they had it as well because I saw their link. I didn't see the Gradic link. Maybe I'm blocked again. Yeah, no, I don't know. I, don't know. I mean, I did see the WGTV camera guys there, um, so mm-hmm. I didn't see them. But yeah, today I saw the the post. It was like a four hour video, so almost like they had done it live. So. I mean, nice of the surrounding areas to you know cover you know things outside of football and the different different sports and even the bands. Um, it's always a, a good annual thing to go watch and um, see them put on their shows. Um, yeah, but yeah, that's that's uh it's, it was the start to a busy week uh, for us because uh, that was uh, performance one of three for the week, so. <laughs> Um, we got Friday night football at home, um, and then Saturday afternoon back over at Central for a competition. Um, so I probably won't be able to see the Tech game Saturday, even though it's later. I'll be gone for pretty much all day. Um, Jake has to report at like one o'clock, and it's all day thing. So I'll be there for ever. Well, but it, yeah, it, it was weird. good to have a little. <laughs> you got one of these and stadium Wi-Fi, so I feel like you're going to be able to watch more than you're saying you are. And uh, we all know that even <laughs> when we miss that live, we come home and we we do watch it before we we get back on these shows. We we don't just go based off a of stat sheet or nothing like that. We actually do watch these games, and I think you guys know that in in the way we break things down. Uh, quickly, uh, I'm wearing this. I uh, did some some uh, promo work and some other stuff today with uh, Great American Incorporated uh, out in the Lithia Springs area. They're um, they're uh, they do medium and, and big truck diesel parts, and they did not pay me to say this. I wish they did. Uh, that would be great to get paid to do this by them. But um, no, the whole month is uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and and just women's you know getting screened and stuff like that month. They did a, a customer appreciation thing today. That's why I, we're all wearing. Yeah, it looks orange on here, but it's it's pink. Uh, and uh, you know there there are a lot of women in the trucking industry. And, uh, you know, just all month they're doing that to recognize, to, to get screened and, and they're raising money by selling some special pink straps, the, the big wide, I think three or four inch ones. Uh, they're, they're like $10 off what they normally are normally like $24 straps. And these are like 16 bucks or something like that. And proceeds go to a local thing. And, and we were out doing some promo work with them today. Uh, fantastic. Go see great American. Tell them, but yeah, they are not going to know who the impact is. Tell them Jeremy sent you <laughs> and uh, and uh, come say hello to all the fun people there. Other stuff throughout throughout the month, too. But I uh, just want to do that because I know it keeps randomly. I keep seeing on truck and, and different stuff. And, and before we get like 100 emails about what in the world I'm wearing, 
Um, again, just want to throw that out there. Uh, they do some great stuff. Uh, come, come get your truck parts from them. They, they got more stuff than you think they do. And, and if they don't have it, they could probably get it, but, uh, definitely give them a shout uh, shout out for that. Uh, for probably the two employees that may, that may be anywhere near this show. Uh, I know one for sure. Uh, there might be another one that caught like two minutes of it, but definitely appreciate it. Um, So there yeah, hop on that. Um, I told you there's a theme. <laughs> um, here lately, everything's coming up Atlanta, and three out of the four things I'm going to say are coming up Georgia Tech. Uh, here's the theme. There's a real good shot. I said it earlier this week on the KSU show, Hootie Who. There's a real good shot. Braun Breaker is going to be in town for Friday night's KSU game, which is where I'll be Friday night. Um, it just, there's, I'm, I mapped out like three or four solid reasons why he should be in town. Um, and then the, I mean, he might as well be the official move over buzz. The official mascot of Georgia tech is Seamus now by far. Anytime he is near the team, he, he is the social ambassador now. Uh, in fact, Matthew McConaughey is probably quite jealous. Uh, and then, you know, we saw, we saw where Roman Reigns took the photo with, uh, Coach Key. Well, what that had to do with was a Friday Night SmackDown uh, taping they did. They taped a promo between him and Cody Rhodes, where he said, "You're on my turf. You're on. You're on in my stadium." And Cody said, "Well, you're in my city. You're in my town. This this is Rhodes Country." And uh, you know they're agreeing. They're agreeing to disagree for the sake of of the storyline of taking out the bloodline. But everybody seems to center around Atlanta. And three out of those four are centered around Georgia Tech. It's it's a good time to be a techie. Yeah, definitely. And um, I just saw that uh, you know for that Georgia Miami game, Georgia Tech, excuse me, not Georgia Miami, Georgia Tech Miami game um, um, in November, uh, we're we're we like to put on a block party that we call the the hell of a block party. And if you want to come out with that, we'll have a nice little concert put on by a big boy of Outcast. I saw him last year at KSU. I implore you, if you've never seen him, or if you if you've never seen Big Boy in person, or in, yeah, in person in general, but if you've never seen him in concert, definitely do. I don't have to tell people that have seen him before because they're going to fight you to go see him again. <laughs> that dude put on a show that is unreal. He played all the hits. Played a bunch of different stuff. I uh, wish Andre would have been there, but it, it didn't matter. And uh, I even got to meet him afterwards, and he is as genuine as you think he would be. Fantastic guy. Yeah, definitely. Uh, back when I was enrolled at that place behind you, I got to see him with cake for a uh, sting break party, as we called it back then. We'd always have concerts during spring break, and we always call it Steam Break. So, you know, I had the, my senior year there, I had, it was Big Boy and Cake. Uh, that's a <laughs> hell of a show. Yeah, yeah they always uh, bring on different ones. I mean, it's great. That's who you got to get. If we're going to talk about all the hell of a good time you can have, then there's one WWE employee that's missing. He's everybody's favorite. I think he's French, French Canadian, Sammy Zayn, whose finishing move is the Haluva kick. <laughs> Why is Sammy Zayn and Sheamus not out here? Man, what WWE, you're missing the boat. You know, Sammy, go hang out. Yeah, I mean, we'll welcome anybody to come down here. <laughs> but, you know, enough kidding around, even though most. I would say all of that is pretty factual. We just said um, big tests at home at Bobby Dodd Stadium. Because, like I said, this is our show. We'll call it whatever we want. That's Bobby Dodd Stadium. Um, it's not good. Sorry, I have the Mets Brewers game on in the background. And uh, as a lifelong Mets fan, unfortunately, guys, uh, I you know, hey, I'll say this: Mets aren't in it. I want the Braves to do well, but the Mets are in it right now, so go Mets. That's where I'm at. <laughs> Mets are being Mets right yeah, now. Uh, but you got the 5-0 and Dukies, the 5-0 and 
Duke Blue Devils. Um, unfortunately, in this area, the only Blue Devils that uh, we, we like are from Bremen, or Bremen, as I like to refer to it. But uh, the 5-0 and Dukies are going to come in town. Georgia Tech at 3-2. and two. This is probably test number three. I don't have Duke in that top echelon that Syracuse and the other team you lost to. I just forgot them. But uh, I don't have them in that quite. They're probably in that next tier with Georgia Tech. I got Duke and Georgia Tech probably in a similar boat. Um, and you get prime time. It's 8 p.m. on ACC Network, and I don't know how. Georgia Tech is a nine-point favorite, according to ESPN Bet, who I thought DraftKings did their odds. Apparently, ESPN Bet is who does ESPN's odds. And they have got you at a nine-point favorite against Duke, who is undefeated. That means if they played in your backyard or my backyard, they'd be a six-point favorite, which is still kind of crazy. What you think about it? Yeah, definitely uh, a little crazy there. Um, a team that's you know, ranked very high um, in different areas. And, I mean, like you said, they're 5-0. and um, you know, Recently beating, going toe-to-toe with North Carolina, um, who we get next after them. Um, yeah. But it's always a good matchup um, with the two the, the Carolina teams go go against each other. Um, yeah, that, that's recently, just a little crazy. I mean, recently, it is. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that would, that would be crazy to be a nine point favorite. Um, that would they're seeing something there, um, a good matchup. Um, I mean, that would be some key areas uh, we'll get into um, that we really need a little match up very well. But, yeah, that's a that's an interesting start on, on line there. Yeah, I was looking at I was looking at who Duke has faced, and they basically uh, ran the the uh, March Madness gauntlet of basketball schools. Um, <laughs> they started off 26 to three over Elon. Uh, okay. Then they beat yeah. Northwestern 26 to 20. There's kind of a theme here because they also scored 26 points the next week against the Yukon Huskies in 26 to 21 yeah. there. Then they remembered they could score uh, almost twice that, and they beat Middle Tennessee State 45 to 17 before ultimately barely edging North Carolina 21 20. So I'd venture to guess that at least three to four of those, I would, yeah, North Carolina was their only test. Um, the rest of those are. Yeah, Northwestern's usually pretty decent. I'll give them a little bit of credit. But three of the five are basketball schools. Northwestern has a, a – they got to play in the Big Ten, so they got to have a little bit of squad there. But no wonder they're 5-0. and oh. I mean, if Georgia Tech played that schedule, they'd probably be 5-0. and oh. Yeah. Um, that way, I mean, no – no harm, no foul to Elon. But, I mean, that's just another one of those, like – it's always going to be one of those on their schedule, um, one of those schools you can easily get to from there. Um, Middle Tennessee State, you know, they're there. There can be one of those kind of like App State ones who just ruin your year. Um, they did that oh, to yeah. us once. Um, I was I was actually in Tennessee when that happened. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, you never know that, but yeah, I mean, they're. They're they're beating who they should be, and then they're going toe to toe with the ones you think. Mm, okay, this, this could be that. So, I mean, that could be a reason. I mean, they are five and O's, but you know who they're playing, how they're playing, is I mean, why they're not ranked. Um, but you know, they're, they're figuring out something. You know, those, the ones that are close, they're figuring out how to win just enough. You yeah, know, just stick by, especially with the especially with the UNC game because. I mean, I was looking at that score all day, and it was UNC pretty much all day, and they just sneak back and take it. Um, so, I mean, that's definitely something to look um, look at is, you know, a team that's willing to go toe-to-toe and persevere through all four quarters. Yeah. I'm just looking at stats. Uh, their leading passer – has 1,226 yards, and that's in five games. So he's averaging like 510, five, I mean, uh, like 210, 215 a game. Uh, their leading rusher has 480 yards, so he's averaging about 85 yards a game. Their leading receiver's got 420. 
So, uh, I mean, he may be smoking up and down the field, but I mean, he's getting 70 yards. Of, I mean, they seem pretty, not average, but it seems like it spreads out. It's There's not a lot of, in fact, rushing. The next leading rusher, the number two, only has 131 yards. Um. The backup quarterback is actually their fourth leading rusher with 23 yards. Um, and it looks like they're – how many times has he been sacked? <laughs> their – Murphy, their quarterback, has uh, eight carries for minus 47 yards. That sounds like a bunch of sacks. <laughs> he's going the wrong way. Oh, he's, he's been sacked seven times. There we go. But well, – um, don't seem very special. They just seem like they they do enough. Yep, that's what I'm saying. Like they figure out a way just enough to, you know. At the end of the day, you know, all you got to do is how you win a game or have more points than the person you play. You know, like it doesn't matter how you do it. One point, two points here. You know, it's like NASCAR. You can have somebody lead all 399 laps, but then the guy, someone else leads that last lap. It doesn't matter. They get still in. Yep, we're talking to you. Uh... <laughs> Shoot, I forgot his name. The one that decided it was a demolition derby at the end. I can't remember. I I forgot. It. See, that's how forgettable it is. Yeah, oh, I know. But, I, I I walked away and then came back and the watermelon farmer was throwing watermelons. It was, yeah, he drives for RCR. He's the one related to it. He's the he's the he's the the nephew that he that is actually employed by his grandfather. Had a show on USA, NASCAR guy. Mm. Austin Dillon. That's it. Austin Dillon. There you go. I was like, yeah. no, nope. like, Gibbs, no, Gibbs, no. <laughs> no, not Gibbs. No, I figured it out. I'm looking through their stats plus some of my other notes. Uh, they like to get after the quarterback. Now, granted, they've played slightly below their level, but uh, they got uh, a linebacker with three sacks, another one with a sack and a half, uh, a couple defensive ends with two and two and a half, got a defensive end with three and a half, another defensive end with one and a half, Seems like to me they get pressure on the quarterback and they have 17 total sacks in five games, which means they're averaging like 3.1 or 3.2 sacks a game. They're, they're going to come after the quarterback. That's, that's what they're going to try to do. They're going to try to pressure um, Haynes King. They're going to try to flush him out. He's not the world's best scrambler. He's not terrible. He can run if possible. He does have some pretty good rush yards, but, I, I think in general, if Georgia Tech plays Georgia Tech football, gets a little bit of a run game going, spreads the ball out, they should pick this one up. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's an interesting thing you bring up there with the sacks, and I've said it before, and I'll say it again. We lead the country in sacks allowed at zero. <laughs> so... Um, it definitely, I mean, a lot. That's one of the things. Like that's they like to get after. Um, you know, defensively and offensively, they we talked about their runs. Um, so yeah. Uh, no, I mean, he's not a scrambler, but he, he gets the you know he gets some protection and he figures out you know ways to get out of it and not getting sacked. Um, so definitely, um, we keep that up um, on that. Side of it, it definitely be a. I think, I think we can definitely do it. Absolutely, uh, I think we're in the last eight minutes or so of the show. Um, let's start with the the three keys to victory. We'll start. We'll let you start with the first one. The three. The three. What's the first Brent key to victory? Um, I think with um, the way that their their defense is, then we got to you know, commit to the run game with Jamal Haynes. Um, the way he's, he's producing this year, um, definitely between you know the Haynes and Haynes connection, but definitely if we can get Jamal Haynes going um, on the run game, then I think we'll do do really well there. Yeah, 
I, I would agree with that. Uh, the second Brent Key to victory. It's the only show we can say that on, so we're going to. Shout out, Coach Key. My offer still stands. Tell me when you want to get some varsity, and we'll, we'll we're down there. I promise you. I want to see this team that only has five total sacks on the year get after their quarterback. If this guy's been sacked seven times already, you have the line and you have the linebackers to get after this guy and trust your guys in coverage. They've been doing a pretty good job. You haven't gotten beat by monster plays a whole lot this year. I would say maybe two or three, maybe if I think hard enough, one come to mind, maybe two, two to three total that you get, you got beat on a big play. Other than that, Georgia Tech keeps it all in front of them. So I want you to get after him. I don't, it doesn't have to be sacks, even if you don't get a single sack. I want you to have this guy so flustered and jumping around everywhere that he sees ghosts and he just keeps making decisions, bad decisions faster than he wants to make the decision. I, I say you got to put the pressure and, and, you know, get after this guy. So what do you got as the third Brent key of the game to a Yellow Jacket victory? I kind of go along with my um, first um, pick about the getting the running uh, running back going. Um, the the offensive line, you know, we we begin we we talked about you know we have allowed sacks, and I think you know if we, our offensive line continues to play the way we have and with that protection um, to you know, prevent them from getting to us and. Being able to you know, set up to have them all run, um, that kind of that combo there of like one and third, one pick, I think uh, definitely will will help there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I I think that's. I mean, like I said, this is Georgia Tech football. We didn't say for them to do anything out of the ordinary that they haven't done this entire year. Now they've came out a little flat here and there against bigger competition, but. Other than that, they, they were still playing Georgia Tech football, and that's that's doing the things we just said. Uh, like I said, ACC Network, 8 p.m. I may be in a similar boat. I may be at State Farm Arena Saturday night. I'm That is still pending and hoping to hear back very soon on that. Uh, calling in some ma- just monster favors. Hopefully that does. If not, I'll be home to watch this one for sure. But uh, like I said, 8 p.m. ACC Network. Uh, it's going to be a good battle. And this, based off where both these teams are right now, like I said, I think they're in a similar boat. But I think it's because Duke is kind of trending down a little bit because they're actually getting into the, the meat of their schedule. They get FSU and some other ones after this. And Georgia Tech, like, started high, came down a little bit, and I think they're back on the rise. So, you know, these guys may be, like, passing each other in an elevator. It might be where these two teams are. And based off the way this goes, we're going to see where both these teams are. Yep. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, it's kind of those things, uh, one of those matchups we have every year. Um, so uh, definitely um, going to look good. Uh, let's see Saturday. Yep. That we definitely will. Uh, I really do think Georgia Tech is going to win this game. Uh, I don't think it's going to be by nine points or better. Uh, I would take the under on that, but I'll take Georgia Tech in a in an eight or less victory. Yeah, yeah, I'm going go with you there. Um, I'm thinking maybe um, the way Duke's been playing with those, and we'll watch it kind of match that. But I'm thinking maybe like a, a three to five range uh, difference. Yeah. Probably something like that. I think it's. I think it's going to be a good day for Burr, and and uh, I, I think the punter's not going to get a lot of work. I think Georgia Tech's going to be able to move the ball, and Burr's going to be putting them through the uprights. So, uh, got a couple minutes left. Any uh, final words or anything? Um, no, I think we're going to do pretty good. Um, like I said, it's going to be good to see what happens uh, this weekend. Uh, get in some more ACC play, um, high school. Carrollton is getting into their region play on Friday. Um, let's see how how those are going, how that's going to all shape out. I uh, you know still thoughts and prayers to you know, everyone still affected by hurricane and all yeah. the six states. Uh, I know we got people around Inclu- me, including you know, the Carolinas. Yeah. The the you know you know the Duke area too. The, the Carolinas, uh, just wow. Just reach out and help somebody. That's that's all I tell people. Reach out and help somebody. Yeah, because I mean. 
you never know, you know how how those are affected. I mean, I know even out here the um, you know, the Ingles Ingles markets you can't buy anything with credit cards even down here in Georgia because of their headquarters being in Asheville and you know underwater. Um, lots of places like Chimney Rock, North Carolina, are just gone. So um, yeah. Yeah, that would thoughts that are out there um, and you know everywhere anyone is affected. Yeah. And we're not gonna end on a lower note. So once again, eight PM <laughs> ACC network. Uh that means you can probably find on ESPN plus, Hulu, those kind of fun places. Um because Saturday night under the lights of Bobby Dodd Field is gonna be fight night, fellas. So we have we have we have fight night. We got we got to get that going. Uh, you know what? No, nope. Seamus will not be. The, well, he might be if he's not at State Farm that night. He might be. He'd have a reason to be in town too. But other than that, he's my tag team partner, GA Tech John Watts. I am Jeremy, the Impact York. Thanks for tuning in to Up with the White and Gold. We will see you guys next time. Deuces, gooses, go Jackets. Go Jackets.